Hello friends and welcome. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. Today I have for you a German vintage classic from the 1950s. It uh, comes in this original box, but uh, I'm not so sure it is original to this fountain pen. I will show you why. So, first of all, we have Artus, we have Perfect, and as it is the case with uh, all the German fountain pens, on the box we have the number of the model and EF the size of the nib. And I will open the box. Here it is, the fountain pen. It uh, comes with the papers, instruction papers, right here. And this is the fountain pen. So, why do I think that the box it isn't specific to this model? On here, on the end of the turning knob, we had 160 and EF. And you can see here, we have 151 and EF. Maybe I'm uh, mistaken, but... Um, I know for sure, uh, based on the condition of this fountain pen and looking at the ink window, this is an NOS model, a beautiful, beautiful model. And I think that this model was made by Artus for the export market. And I have two clues. The first clue is that on the barrel we have Artus and we also have made in Germany. In my collection, I have another Artus fountain pen. And this time is the 22B with also a EF nib. And on the barrel, we have simple Artus. So no made in Germany. And this is one clue made in Germany. The second clue is this interesting, and I think it is a price tag. We have 1,700 L for Liras. So I think this model comes from Italy and it still has its sticker price. If we look at the instructions, we see that they are written in German they are written in Italian, Instruzioni per penne stilografice artus, and they are also written in French, Moad d'Emploi du Stilo. So guys, considering the fact that we have instructions in Italian, we have a price sticker in Lira Italiana, and we have here made in Germany, I think this model was intended for the export market. Looking at it, we have a classic design from the end of the 1950s. I don't think it's celluloid. It is a plastic injection. But if we look at the gold rims, they are in perfect shape. And this tells me it was never, never used. We will start with the cap that has a band here, a ring band. It has this clip written on it, imprinted, it is Artus. Let me test how springy it is. It's quite springy. It ends uh, not in a flat, but in this uh, dome-like ending. You can see. Also, the back of the turning knob is in the, this slightly curved, like a dome ending. The cap on screws. And um, it is quite an interesting design uh, element. You can see that this part containing the ink windows, because we have several ink windows, is slightly more narrower than the barrel section. A quite nice uh, design element. I believe this has a gold nib. I don't know how to open it to show you the gold markings, but I've read about the 1950s Artus model and they seem to all that were equipped with gold nibs. At the back we have this 
design traits that we will see also on Lamy products. You must know that Artus was German manufacturer that was taken over by Lamy. I want to show you, if it is possible in this lighting, the turning knob and it is a plastic piston filler and just look at the ink windows because you will see i hope that um, it is visible yes now you can see the plastic turning knob it is all plastic and it is quite quite noticeable this is the fountain pen that i want to show you but i also have an interesting lamy product lamy 2730 let me show it to you so lamy 2730 that has similar traits to our fountain pen. Let me put them side by side to show you what I mean. Let me close the turning knob. So they are both the same, the same size, if you can see. Yes, even that dome feature, it is uh, copied by Lamy, but this time we have the logo Lamy. You can see the difference this ring is slightly narrower than this ring and this ring covers the ending of the cap this is a pressure so the cap is pressure fitted and this unscrews but look guys we have the same difference between uh, those types so simply the part where you can screw was replaced by this part we have the same ink windows and look at the nibs so this is the lamy and this is the artus the lamy has the breathing hole exposed and even a slight curvature in the grip section and on the back we have the same same design Maybe this is uh, cut straight off and this has uh, another, um, you can see. Just for a comparison, I have uh, the famous, famous Lamy 2000, which was uh, designed in 1967. Just to compare it with this uh, model from the 1950s made by Artus. Just look at the end, at the feed, and at the design. The nib is identical, identic, you can see. Of course, uh, they made some changes in the ink windows, but quite, quite similar fountain pens. So it shows that Artus is very important for the history of the Lamy. It is a shame that they don't mention in the history of the company those um, little designs that uh, took them to launch this simple and very very popular fountain pen. So behind this model was the Lamy 27 and before the Lamy 27 it was this beautiful beautiful Artus Perfect. Although they are considered fountain pens for students and for young uh, scholars. And by the way, I want to show you guys some real, real cool, interesting fact about this Artus fountain pen. And it was brought to my attention when I did the review of this model Artus in a comment that this has a little formula that was, look at it, it was scratched in the cap. It is a formula and uh, it shows us that uh, it was definitely used by students and uh, maybe this was a way to uh, remember this formula at an exam or something like that. I love those little, little things that um, uh, 
add to the story of the fountain pen. For example, many collectors don't want their banners or their caps imprinted with the name of the previous owner. But for me, it is not a problem. It is part of that pen's history and story. And it makes a piece rather, rather interesting that a simple, plain NOS model. But, of course, also an NOS model has its perks. And for this reason, guys, I hope that you can um, um, understand why I will. Um, I will. I don't uh, ink this fountain pen. For the writing sample, I will just dip it in ink, and we will see how it writes. But before we dip it in ink, let me put. Uh, this side by side with other models from Lamy. So this is the Lamy 27, the precursor of Lamy 2000. This is a Lamy 2000, another Artus here, and why not another modern German fountain pen, the Pelican Souvron M800. You can see them all side by side. I will leave the measures of our Artus 160 on the screen and after that I will uh, try to do the writing sample. For the ink I will use this Faber Castle Rot Red ink. It's an, quite an interesting ink. I told you I will simply dip it in ink and I hope that um, it will perform well. Put the ink here. I will uh, leave it open for a moment to see if uh, it writes. Let me see. I will try to write as um, large as I can for you guys to see. So this is an Artus. Number 160. It came with the EF gold nib and I think it was manufactured in made in Germany Germany in the 1950s and this was a model for the export market and in this case because of the sticker I think it was intended for Italy. You can see it has this uh, semi-hooded nib. Like uh, we saw also on uh, the, the Lamy 2000 and on the Lamy from the uh, beginning of the 60s, Lamy 27. It is a gold nib like I told you. I don't think it has many line variation because it is a semi-hooded nib. But I don't know if you can notice. Maybe it has a little flex to it. I will call it no flex, but it has some line variation. Speaking about line variation, let me do the pressure test. So here without pressure and here we can push on the nib and we can see a slight difference. Let me test also how juicy this nib is. It doesn't appear to be quite juicy, you can see. And let me see if I can reverse write it with it. So, reverse writing. It doesn't have uh, such a great ink flow. Let me see if I can zoom on it. Yes, for you guys to see. So, in reverse writing, you can see it uh, loses its, its juice but let me see yes we have uh, normal writing if we want to uh, make a signature you can see no problems i'm noticing that i don't have much of ink left so i will re dip it in uh, this okay because I want to do the famous phrase with the fox. Okay, so I hope you can see. Yes, let me give it a zoom. So the quick 
brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so this was our phrase you can see it writes quite quite nice it uh, doesn't scratch until you try the reverse writing with it let me test it again so reverse writing so it wasn't designed for reverse writing because it scratches but if you find it a sweet spot like also you can find it the sweet spot on the Lamy 2000 not all my friends love the Lamy 2000 it's a popular model but it isn't for everyone you have to find on this type of nibs the sweet spot so if you can manage to find that sweet spot it is a real treat to write with them Of course, the hooded nib is a reminiscence or it's a trait of the Parker 51. And uh, you know the Parker 51. They, uh, by design, they weren't like the open nibs, like, uh, and they did not uh, allow lots of line variation, the tines. So, um, the tines here are quite uh, well held together by the plastic here on the grip section i'm sorry let me <laughs> clean myself yeah uh, so guys this was my uh, writing sample with it and it did a great job considering i didn't fill the reservoir with ink i hope you've enjoyed this uh, uh let's say um little part of uh, German fountain pen uh, manufacturing history and uh, quite quite uh, an ancestor of the Lamy 2000 so for the young audience of this channel guys this Lamy 2000 was possible because of those model Artus model in the 1950s and of course uh, other uh, design uh, variations with the Lamy 27. This is part of Lamy's history. I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I want to wish you to have a nice day wherever you are. I want to thank you for your time. If you've enjoyed this review, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I will uh, see you again, guys, at the next episode. And till then, bye-bye.